m infinity is v infinity by infinity that we know that is uh, uh, the ratio of local velocity of air uh, local velocity of the gas divided by the sound velocity based on the local static temperature so v infinity divided by root of gamma rt this can be easily shown as uh, the flow kinetic energy divided by internal energy being proportional to the flow kinetic energy and the internal energy uh, guess we have come across that uh, earlier you know, that's just a, a relation from your uh, compressible flows uh, where we we have say kinetic energy is nothing but in terms of v infinity squared and internal energy is cv into t okay and this cv can be written in terms of gamma and r so uh, basically what we have is the the kinetic energy divided the, the proportionality will be between the kinetic energy term i mean specific kinetic energy term and the specific internal energy term so uh, uh, an easy way or a useful way of understanding mach number is a parameter that the square of which is proportional to the uh, ratio of kinetic energy to the internal energy <clears throat> Uh, Reynolds number, uh, as you all know very well from uh, fluid mechanics, uh, represents the ratio of inertia force to viscous force. And then there is uh, this Prandtl number, uh, mu Cp by k. I, I pause for a minute, but I wait for answer from you. Uh, have you come across Prandtl number earlier, anywhere, in any course? Sir, most. Oh, sorry. No, right? Hello? No, sir. No, sir. Yeah. Ah, no. Ah, okay. So we will discuss that. With, uh, that's what I expected. Usually, Prandtl number will be introduced only when uh, if there is a course on heat transfer, which we didn't have so far, uh, which is actually uh, an elective, uh, but it's not offered I guess, this semester. Uh, anyway. So uh, we will. Uh, so since we are familiar with m infinity and uh, sorry Mach number and uh, Reynolds number, we will try to understand more about Prandtl number. Uh, the formulation is somewhat straightforward. Mu C P by K. That is the way uh, similar to definition of Reynolds number as rho V D by mu. Here you have mu C P and K. What is mu? The dynamic viscosity of the gas. C P the uh, static uh, the calorific value sorry uh, specific heat at constant pressure cp the same value as we have been always using uh, to calculate uh, h uh, enthalpy and k is the thermal conductivity of the gas so mu viscosity cp the specific heat and k the thermal conductivity of the gas of the fluid actually, uh, mu CP, uh, Prandtl number is defined, uh, is used for both uh, gases and fluids. So, sorry, gases and liquids. Uh, uh, so the definition is mu CP by K. Now, more importantly, what does it signify? Frictional, it's, a, it's proportional to frictional dissipation divided by thermal conduction. Uh, I'll try to explain these two. Uh, frictional dissipation. Frictional here means because of fluid friction. So the momentum exchange because of the interlayer transport of uh, energy across the uh, fluid. So that I mean, so what is meant frictional is the momentum transport across the layers. Okay, that divided by thermal conduction. So what do what do you mean by dissipation? That is, if you have momentum, a, a, a higher momentum in the uh, free stream flow and a lower momentum near the wall, then the dissipation of the higher momentum because of the property of viscosity, the rate of that. That is basically what is uh, represented by the numerator, numerator there, frictional dissipation. Thermal conduction is nothing but the transfer of energy by way of conduction. Conduction. Okay, so, so even fluids and even liquids and gases have conduction. What is conduction? Conduction is transfer of energy by intermolecular exchange. Molecule to molecule exchange. Basically, the thermal energy because of the 
thermal gradient, uh, thermal energy flow because of the temperature gradient between, between the molecules is what is thermal conduction. So transfer of thermal energy, the rate of it, that is, th that is what is numerator. The transfer of momentum is, uh, sorry, the transfer of thermal energy, the conductivity that is in the denominator. Numerator is the, tran the rate of transfer of momentum. Uh, so uh, this uh, both are molecular phenomena, the transfer of momentum as well as transfer of temperature, uh, thermal energy. Okay, and the the both uh, they are also governed by the uh, specific heat. So we will we'll come to that physically how that manifests. So uh, mu C P by K, a non-dimensional parameter. If you uh, substitute the where the dimensions, you can find that it's a non-dimensional parameter. So Prandtl number mu C P by K, a highly a very popular uh, parameter that is used in applications where both viscosity and heat transfer are important. I repeat that, applicable in situations where both viscosity and heat transfer, that is momentum exchange as well as uh, thermal energy exchange are important. Uh, since we are going to have, uh, since now we are considering viscous flows, we will be continuously referring to this parameter, Prandtl number. Okay, now just, uh, uh, looking at some of the values and their implications. Uh, a non-dimensional parameter, as I mentioned, uh, prominently used in uh, heat transfer, probably one of the most commonly used. Uh, um, uh, in fact, heat transfer has a lot of such non-dimensional parameters, uh, uh, which are so uh, like this called as a number uh, with somebody's name, et cetera. Uh, probably one among them, Prandtl number uh, is one of the, uh, is. Um, if you, if you look at the frequency of reference, uh, Prandtl number will be uh, in the top uh, one or two percentage of the uh, non-dimensional parameters that are used in uh, heat transfer. And then uh, used in calculations of heat transfer between moving fluid and a solid body, that is important. Uh, when there is a relative movement between solid body and fluid, the heat transfer, the thermal energy transfer between the two, when that is being analyzed, both the viscous dissipation and the, th the thermal dissipation are important, and that is where you use Prandtl number defined as mu C P by K. Uh, and please note that uh, I, I said mu is the def mu is the property of the fluid uh, of the fluid C P property of the fluid A property of the fluid conductivity of the fluid, which is a uh, property of uh, fluid. So Prandtl number as such is a property of the fluid. Uh, this you should be very careful. Uh, for example, Reynolds number is not purely a property of the fluid. Reynolds number is governed by fluid properties like mu and rho. But uh, you have velocity in the definition. So rho V D by mu. V is not a fluid property. It's a flow condition, right? So you cannot say water has uh, uh, such and such Reynolds number. No. Water in a given situation, when it is flowing through a channel with such and such velocity, you can say this is the uh, Reynolds number. But otherwise, you cannot uh, expect the value of what uh, Reynolds number being tabulated for different fluids, etc., because it's not purely a uh, fluid parameter. Similarly, Mach number. Mach number is V divided by A, V divided by root of gamma RT. Gamma and R are uh, specific to the gas. But temperature is a condition. V is a flow condition. So V divided by root of gamma RT is not fully a gas property. Actually, it's not a fluid property. It, it's more like it is specified for a given flow at a given set of conditions. As opposed to this, Prandtl number is defined fully in terms of fluid properties. So mu CP by K, both are, all the three are fluid properties. So you have tables where uh, Reynolds, uh, sorry, the Prandtl number is listed for different gases and liquids, etc. So they are all available as tabulated values. Uh, now, as you can notice, mu is a function of temperature. Cp is also strictly a function of temperature. K also, uh, to some extent, depends on temperature. So the, it can be Prandtl number can be uh, dependent on temperature. Many times you may assume it to be constant. 
but Prandtl number strictly speaking is a function of temperature, which in turn means that the property listing can be with respect to temperature. So water or air, you can have uh, for such as such a temperature, this is Prandtl number. So yeah, and similarly, so, uh, over a range of temperatures, you can have the listing of uh, uh, Prandtl numbers. Now, uh, what what's the value at standard conditions for air? You can uh, calculate it easily. You use the value of mu, Cp, and K. Uh, it comes out to be uh, close to 0 0.71. Uh, sometimes used as 0 0.7. So air at standard conditions. Standard conditions means uh, standard atmospheric temperature and pressure. Uh, the value of uh, a Prandtl number for air can be calculated as 0 0.71. Uh, sometimes used as 0 0.7, approximated as 0 0.7. Uh, and this can be calculated just by uh, inserting the values, corresponding values of mu, C, P, and K for air. <clears throat> now, uh, I mentioned about the frictional uh, and thermal transfer, etc. A better way uh, or a more formal way of expressing that, uh, which you commonly see in the literature, is as momentum diffusivity to thermal diffusivity. So Prandtl number quite often is uh, signified or is characterized or, or defined as moment, the ratio of momentum diffusivity to thermal diffusivity. What do you mean by momentum diffusivity? The easiness or the rate at which momentum diffuses through a gas or a fluid or, or, a, or a liquid. Uh, and so similarly, thermal diffusivity means thermal energy, the rate at which thermal energy diffuses. I'll try to explain that with a sketch. Let's consider a, a flat plate, a stationary flat plate, and you have flow coming in. The flat plate is at some, uh, its velocity is zero, whereas the flow has some velocity, let's say 50 meter per second. Okay, uh, so uh, as you know, there will be a uh, the, so the flow, the mainstream flow goes like this, but then as we know, there will be a buildup of boundary line, right? So uh, why that uh, boundary layer is formed? <clears throat> the boundary layer is formed because of the uh, because uh, of the building gradient that is uh, uh, because of shear stress. There is going to be a velocity uh, or that. A velocity gradient is going to be supported because of the viscosity, and that is going to have a shear stress. As a result of which, the there will be a lower velocity near the wall because eventually at the wall you have no slip condition. So the fluid velocity will be equal to wall velocity zero, which is zero at the wall. But then uh, in the mainstream you have the fluid velocity, which is 50 meter per second. So from zero at the wall to 50 meter per second at the mainstream, there is a variation. So in the region where most of this variation takes place is what we call as the, uh, the boundary layer, right? So as you keep moving, as the flow proceeds through in the, in the stream waste direction, the boundary layer keeps growing. Why does the boundary layer keep growing? Because the rate of momentum or rather, the momentum uh, <clears throat> dissipation proceeds gradually. Momentum dissipation. Now, uh, that, what do I mean by proceeding gradually? It means the larger and larger areas of the, flu uh, the fluid, larger and larger thicknesses of the fluid are getting up now affected by the uh, affected by the momentum dissipation. So as you go, you may you may have a larger thickness. Okay, so that, that is what is meant by the diffusivity of momentum, the rate of diffusivity of momentum. Similarly, thermal diffusivity is the same thing, but expressed in terms of the energy transfer, thermal energy transfer. Again, uh, to understand that, uh, consider the Let's consider again a, flu, um, a flat plate and uh, you have the fluid coming with some uh, 
velocity. Uh, you have the uh, the momentum layer, uh, the boundary layer that being uh, that we just discussed about, the boundary layer being established. Now, in addition to what we had in the case one, let's consider in this case two also the temperature difference. That is, the flow is coming with a, uh, a free stream temperature flow, say T infinity is equal to let's say uh, 300 and what 350 Kelvin. Let's say uh, let's assume that heated air is coming in. Okay. Whereas the wall is by some means maintained at say, let's say TW is 300 Kelvin. Okay. So I have a lower temperature at the wall TW, which is 300. But at any given uh, section, I will, the free stream temperature, which is 350, has to be achieved for the flow. So here it will be uh, at some point it will be 350. Now the question is how what is going to be the thickness in which you are going to achieve that 350 or close to that. Um, they say 0.9 times etc. So close to that. So that thickness is what we call as the region in which the temperature gradient or the thermal gradient is high. So in the case of boundary layer we consider the region where the, the momentum exchange is taking place as the boundary layer. Here, the thermal energy exchange is taking place and the region that is through which it is happening is what we call as the region which is affected by the thermal gradient and is usually referred to as the thermal boundary layer. Thermal boundary layer. So in fluid mechanics, if you just say boundary layer, it means momentum boundary layer. In the presence of heat transfer, you will also have a thermal boundary layer, which means a region adjacent to the wall where the temperature gradients are more, not the momentum, the temperature gradients are high. Okay, now we will, we will look at uh, the implication of Prandtl number on these two layers, okay. Uh, when when you say parental number is less than one, uh, I'll, I'll just restate the definition here so that it can be easily. Mu Cp by K. All fluid properties. When parental number is less than one, it means that the, the influence of uh, mu <clears throat> is lower than the influence of k. Influence of mu relates to momentum transfer. Influence of k relates to thermal diffusivity or temperature, thermal energy transfer. Okay, so when k is dominating or when the thermal energy as a transfer is faster, then we say that the thermal diffusivity is high, that is, the way that the thermal gradient uh, sp uh, speeds up or rather uh, spreads into the uh, into the mainstream that is high so the build up of the thermal boundary layer will be faster when thermal diffusivity is high uh, similarly when prandtl number is uh, greater than 1 it means that the momentum diffusivity is high so uh, we know uh, the def definition actually or the significant this one is Thermal momentum diffusivity divided by thermal diffusivity. So when you have a high value of Prandtl number, it means that momentum diffusivity is high. And when you have a low value of Prandtl number, it means uh, thermal diffusivity is high. And as you can very well uh, guess, when Prandtl number equals one, it means that both has the same magnitude. That is the rate of diffusivity of momentum and that of thermal energy is uh, uh, the same. Now, uh, to give you some values, frontal number for um, uh, water is around 7.6. Remember, uh, for air, it is 0 0.71. For air, the frontal number is 0 0.741. Water, which is much more viscous than air, has about uh, 10 times or more than that. Uh, a higher frontal number, which is 7.6. And for uh, highly viscous fluids, uh, like engine oil, which are used as lubricants, etc., uh, you have very high values of uh, Prandtl number like uh, 400 and above. 
So these are some typical values. So uh, you should, it's, it's uh, useful to keep in mind the values of Prandtl number as standard uh, uh, conditions for water and air. Air is 0 0.71 and water is around 7.6. Uh, and you and you will also see that in in many of the discussions that we are going to do, we sometimes take the Prandtl number as unity for air, as because 4 in 7 is very close to unity. And also under some conditions when uh, viscosity is lower, uh, viscosity is higher, etc., because of uh, higher temperatures, the value will approach unity. So in in some of the approximations, we may take Prandtl number for air equal to unity but then uh, the value that if you strictly calculate it will come out to be 0 0.71 i pause here if you have any questions on frontal number uh, i'll try to address it. <coughs> uh, sir i have a question yep um so so when we say that thermal diffusivity is high does it mean the boundary layer due to the thermal diffusivity is more or less uh, that I'm just coming to that now. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll explain that. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that's the next topic. Uh, how the two boundary layers behave depending on uh, what you just mentioned now. That is the thermal diffusivity and momentum diffusivity. How they determine the thickness of the boundary layer. That is implicit to the definition of Prandtl number. So we'll, we'll uh, that's exactly what we are going to discuss. Now. Uh, anything else? So we, we have right here the point that you raised, uh, the velocity boundary layer and thermal boundary layer. Uh, I do not agree, I am not happy with these two terms, but we keep using it because everybody uses that in the literature. Uh, velocity boundary layer is a better term would be momentum boundary layer. Okay. Uh, but then we may use velocity boundary layer also as the alternative word, alternate word because everybody keeps using it. Similarly, thermal boundary layer is also not a good, uh, uh, I guess it's not a good, uh, uh, what should I say, um, a good technology uh, if they uh, really looked at the, the technology or the physics of it. Uh, but then we'll, we'll stick to the uh, current uh, uh, method of uh, defining them or calling them. Uh, so the temperature based or temperature gradient based uh, boundary layer, we'll call it as thermal boundary layer and the momentum gradient based boundary layer, we'll call it as either velocity boundary layer or momentum boundary layer. Okay. Now, uh, now let's look at the three conditions here. I hope they are clear. I'll, I'll just clear the ink so that. Uh, so, when uh, let's look at the the three scenarios that are shown here. One is Prandtl number less than one, mu Cp by K less than one, which means the thermal diffusion dominates, or the diffusion of thermal energy takes place at a larger rate than the uh, the diffusion of momentum. Okay. Uh, uh, if, uh, so if, when that ha uh, when that takes place, you can you can see that the uh, or we can actually intuitively uh, think uh, understand or foresee that the thermal boundary layer will be uh, thicker than the, uh, the dynamic boundary layer, the fluid dynamic boundary layer, or the momentum boundary layer. Actually, fluid dynamic boundary layer is the term that I would have used. Uh, instead of uh, velocity boundary layer. Anyway, so uh, that velocity boundary layer, you can see that the blue one, uh, which is shown here as the blue one, will be lower or uh, at any given section, at any given uh, section, uh, at any given x value, the thickness of momentum boundary layer will be lower than the thickness of the thermal boundary layer. That is because 
the thermal energy diffuses fast uh, into the uh, the flow field uh, into the mainstream so the influence of the wall influence of the wall will be felt at a faster rate in the uh, flow than the uh, the influence the thermal influence or influence of the temperature gradient caused by the wall is felt at a rate faster than the influence um, or uh, because of the velocity gradient is felt okay so that means when prandtl number is less uh, less than 1 thermal diffusivity dominates and the temperature boundary layer or the thermal boundary layer will be thicker than the uh, velocity boundary layer or the momentum boundary layer similarly on the other side uh, when you have prandtl number greater than 1 the momentum diffusivity dominates than the thermal diffusivity so the momentum boundary layer will be growing at a rate larger uh, faster than the uh, thermal boundary layer so at any given x location if i look i'll see that the thermal boundary layer is thinner than the momentum boundary layer okay that is the momentum boundary layer will be thicker than the the, so when prandtl number is greater than 1 you will have a thicker bond, thicker momentum boundary layer and relatively thinner thermal boundary layer that is the temperature variations will be <coughs> uh, would have gone le to a lesser extent into the mainstream as compared to the momentum variations okay uh, so this is how the prandtl number the fluid property reflects on the thickness of the two types of boundary layers uh, when you have both heat transfer and momentum transfer present in a uh, situation now i stop again uh, this uh, we will be continuing again with the thickness and the variations etc uh, but does this answer the question that you raised uh, or were you asking something else no sir this is what i asked i ah, asked okay great okay okay so now we proceed from here okay this is just uh, clarifying the same concept uh, once again i just use some other uh, sketches which sort of uh, more graphically uh, explain the same concept uh, i'll just quickly go by what 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 is shown here uh, this is a prandtl number greater than one situation uh, again remember mu cp by k prandtl number prandtl number greater than 1 dominate uh, mu is high that is basically the impact of mu is high which means the momentum boundary layer is thicker than the uh, thermal boundary layer okay the the one uh, we have uh, this is delta t thermal boundary layer thickness delta the momentum boundary layer thickness Uh, so at any given uh, this one you can see that say, this is the velocity distribution which is because of the momentum transfer and this is the temperature distribution which is because of the thermal energy transfer now velocity we know should be zero at the wall but remember temperature need not be yeah so that is you will have a temperature gradient uh, because of the gradient the shape of the boundary layer will be the similar similar for both but uh, for temperature the temperature at the wall is not zero not need not be uh, zero okay need not be zero celsius and uh, we know there is no question of zero kelvin at all okay uh, so in any case it will be a non zero finite value in general at the wall so maybe say for example the case that i mentioned here somewhere yeah uh, the wall temperature is 300 kelvin the flow temperature is 350 kelvin i repeat that wall temperature is 300 kelvin flow temperature is 350 kelvin so at any given section if i go to the wall i will be still measuring a non zero temperature of 300 kelvin right so nothing like uh, an, what you call a zero velocity or uh, uh, corresponding to that zero temperature in the case of uh, thermal boundary layer it only means that at the wall you have the wall temperature it could be higher than the flow temperature lower than the flow temperature see if the wall is getting Uh, heated uh, is quite possible that the wall temperature may be 350 and the flow temperature may be 320 okay so uh, actually in this case that's a situation that you have you can see that the temperature at the wall is higher than the 
flow temperature which means that the wall is getting heated okay so it's actually the the flow is cooling the wall okay okay so uh, that's the situation uh, so in either case we notice that when prandtl number is greater than 1 the thickness of uh, momentum boundary layer at a given location dominates over that of the thermal boundary layer and uh, similarly the next picture to be by you know clear uh, you have prandtl number less than 1 which means that delta the momentum boundary layer thickness is lower than the value of uh, the thermal boundary layer thickness delta t uh, delta t and that's what we see here you have the momentum boundary layer thickness you uh, you have the momentum boundary layer thickness and you have the uh, uh, thermal boundary layer thickness okay so thermal boundary layer is going to be grow, uh, growing at a faster rate than the momentum boundary layer okay so this is the implication this is the significance and this is the importance of prandtl number as far as flows with uh, heat transfer and momentum transfer are concerned this are of particularly of interest in flows where you have heat transfer thermal energy transfer between a viscous fluid and a, a solid wall <clears throat> okay now let's uh, get back to the uh, momentum equation probably we'll continue that in the next class uh, any any questions so far we can just let me go Two forty, two forty plus. So I guess I should stop now. Uh, we'll continue the uh, discussion. Uh, but then, if you have questions of anything that uh, regarding whatever we have discussed so far, we may please raise. Sir, so the heat conduct thermal conduction is only due to viscous forces or uh, external heat addition is also considered. Oh, let me let me try to understand your question. Uh, so, oh, okay. Say so, there should be temperature gradient. Say so, that what you are sort of saying as viscous forces. That is that's a very particular situation. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, strictly speaking, any in any viscous flow situation, there can be a thermal energy uh, gradient because of the viscous dissipation. So what you asked is very correct. That is, is it uh, external temperature, external temperature gradient or viscous gradient? Strictly speaking, any flow will have a viscous, uh, because of the viscous dissipation, there will be a temperature raise. But that temperature raise will be very, very low. Okay. And in most cases, it will be negligible. In fact, we are not going to consider it at all. There are situations where it has to be accounted for. Uh, one one application that comes readily to my mind is uh, in bearings where you have highly viscous lubricants and when you have uh, high speed rotation the temperature rate ratio the temperature gradient that causes because of viscous dissipation will be significantly high okay but those are not the applications that we have in mind we are not considering them so the answer to your question is all the temperature raise all the heat transfer that we are considering is because of externally imposed uh, temperature gradients not because of the heating because of viscous uh, what, what that is called viscous heating so we are we are actually in whatever we have discussed so far we have not considered viscous heating uh, uh, in for many, many of these this ones it will be negligible okay sir. yeah uh, sir when we say yeah. that uh, something is diffusing faster doesn't it mean the change is more, which means gradient is high. By that case, the thickness should be lesser because there's a higher gradient. Right? Why do we say that if something diffuses fast, the thickness is higher? Huh. That, that, very good question, actually. Uh, if that's actually an issue, uh, in fact, that's one reason where I don't like the terminology that people are using prominently here. So the, the, the issue that you asked is very correct, actually. But then what we mean here is that, say, uh, when you say diffu diffusing faster, it just means that the the impact of it is getting uh, at a higher location at a faster rate. 
so uh, that is i have a wall it's at a given temperature now how fast uh, and i have a flow over that flow is coming at a lower temperature uh, how much axial okay, uh, what should i say uh, vertical distance how much does it take for the flow flow to be influenced or to what extent the flow gets influenced by the uh, the temperature difference between the flow and the uh, wall that's the question okay so in this context when you say it is uh, higher diffusivity is higher etc what it means is uh, or what they try to say is uh, how fast is that influence or how far reaching is that influence okay so when it is high we say that the thermal so called thermal boundary layer is thicker okay and similarly in the case of momentum when when we see that it is higher than the thermal boundary we say that the viscous boundary layer or the momentum boundary layer velocity boundary layer is thicker so in this context what we mean by the the diffusivity or the this one being higher is in this sense that is how far it is at a given location how far into the mainstream is the effect of that gradient being felt that's it yes sir understood when it is is the terminology i would say that probably it's a is a limited of the terminology but it's is sort of that's how it is uh, the always being used in the uh, in the literature okay sir got it okay now uh, uh again, i should also uh, somewhat correct me in the uh, that uh, to the earlier question uh, about the viscous heating etc actually in, in uh, hypers since we are in the context of uh, hypersonic flows we should be careful in real applications of hypersonic flows the heating because of fluid friction will also be high that is even in the absence of any other uh, this one of heating that is even in the absence of or even when uh even if you are not considering uh, shock induced increase in temperature uh, static temperature etc uh, the, the because of the high velocity or the ve high velocity gradient the uh, viscous heating or rather frictional heating as we more commonly call that will be higher uh, the help, and so in that of course when moving on in the uh, in specific situations we will be accounting we will try to account for the uh frictional dissipation of thermal energy also this is in answer to what um, was asked earlier okay uh any other questions Okay. okay thank you we'll see you in the next class thanks bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you